Welcome back everyone to thermodynamics. So in our last lecture we spoke on the basically the non-ideal or real ranking cycle in Moran and the interesting aspects that we wanted to pull out of that was that there was a, a very uh, detailed unit conversion for the process going through the pump from a specific volume and a pressure change to approximate the work done by the pump. The other factors that we pulled out was that the work for solving the key steps of the ranking cycle uh, from state one to two or going through the turbine was effectively solving the quality for the entropy of the system and then using that quality term to interpolate between enthalpy values to then get the enthalpy of state two. The final aspect of uh, the real ranking cycle was a, a, a phrase called the isentropic efficiency, which was 85% at that time. That is a correction factor. So we're dividing our, our change in enthalpy by 0.85 to basically, that's a, a number less than zero, so we're gonna get in a larger value of uh, entropy and we'll have an entropy increase from that, and then that entropy increase will be used to find our enthalpy values, our quality and our enthalpy values. So uh, keep that in mind. Isentropic efficiency is not the same thing as thermal or per power performance efficiencies of the whole thermal cycle. The other thing that I want to point out is when you are doing your homeworks, I expect uh, an ethical approach. I expect that you are... Uh, listing clear attribution of where you're getting your resources from and that you are, if you are working with anyone, you are sharing that, that those are the people that you're working with and they would share back as well. As a reminder, when you're working through your homeworks, especially in the ranking cycle areas, you really must write down your diagrams of temperature and, entr and entropy and the vapor dome. If you don't, we it's pretty clear that you uh, will have a hard time explaining or having a deep understanding of the process. Okay, so in this shorter lecture today, I want us to think about what we can do to increase performance in a cycle. And if I were to say, say let's step this back a bit and just look at the work done by energy dissipation and irreversible processes. Okay, so the top plot is an ideal superheated ranking cycle or superheated ideal ranking cycle going from state one to state two in the grid and to three to four back up to one in the gray box. There's a little horn sticking out of the, the front. The So this first diagram in here we're calculating the area underneath of a curve and we're going to subtract the area under the curve from the next diagram to get the area that is bounded by our cycle, which is very much like, uh, very analogous to the clockwise rotation of the Carnot cycle that you saw in heat engine analysis for Carnot cycle. Okay, so uh, let's look at how that uh goes, okay, so I, I'm going to integrate the area, have the total work done as uh, going from state one back to state one. That's my network. It's clockwise, and so we know we're, we're, we're diagramming in a, a heat engine cycle. But if I, I look at in Moran, Moran spends a little more time exploring this in terms of how do we actually compare ways to increase performance. So it would seem that we could increase performance in a system by increasing the boiler pressure. By increasing the boiler pressure, we would have a higher uh, pressure and temperature fluid, which would seem to be a, uh, very useful. But the question is, which is a larger integrated area? So the, the area in red, the question is, is the area in red from one prime to two prime to three to four prime and back to one prime, is that a larger area than one to two to three to four back to one? 
The second thing that you can do is to decrease the condenser pressure. You can actually cool off that liquid as cold as you can get. And it does indeed look like the box is larger uh, by going to cooler temperatures. So in each case, we think we have uh, an opportunity to make more work come out of the system. However, we've got a problem. And that is that, uh, I'm going to pause on the Carnot cycle question for a second. And we've got a problem in that the quality of the water, the quality of this, excuse me, the wet steam and you know, the wet vapor is going to be much, much lower in each of these cases than the initial quality. You know, remember, it's relative to that line. So I have a higher quality vapor when I am uh, operating the ideal ranking cycle as we had designated it earlier. And quality matters in the operations and maintenance of a turbine. So if I have a low quality steam, it means that I will have water droplets in my steam. That water droplet will abrade or will, will you know, effectively gouge out over time the protective uh, uh, surface of the turbine blades, thus exposing by physical abrasion, but exposing the, the surface to corrosion, so we have erosion that leads to corrosion, and electrochemical corrosion, rusting, then makes the blades work less and less well, and you have to shut the turbines down. So low quality steam is, is not as desirable. Now steam itself is much more corrosive than water, than hot water. So it's not that uh, a high quality steam is better because it is less corrosive, that is the opposite. But the water droplets, if you think of them, are more acting as pellets that are attacking the turbine blades, and then they're exposed to that high uh, corrosion of uh, a high energy steam. Okay, so the uh, Moran also going into the upper right plot, the Moran also talks about why not doing a Carnot cycle? So you've got a box in there. If I integrated uh, that box, this is a temperature entropy diagram, and the Carnot cycle has two adiabatic processes, right? The, the here and here are both adiabatic, and those two processes are then going to be isentropic. So why wouldn't we do that? Well, we can clearly see that the, the area inside of this box is smaller than the area that I would get from the ranking, the ideal ranking cycle as well. So, and that alone becomes a very big difference in terms of performance. Uh, there's also the challenge of, of trying to pump a mixture of um, vapor, of, of wet vapor, uh, which becomes its own challenge. But the point here is that we are trying to increase performance while also dealing with real practical turbines. Quality and lower at lower pressure matters far more than just making the area of work larger. Moving on. The ranking superheat and reheat. So superheat is talking about going out to the superheated steam space. Reheat is a step where we realize that once we've superheated our steam, it doesn't take much more energy to uh, pump it back up and reheat the steam and then run it through a second turbine. So the in order to do superheat and reheat, you actually have to remove the boiler. You don't have uh, technically what you would call a boiler. You would have more advanced materials that can survive higher pressure and higher corrosive uh, uh, conditions and you develop a steam generator. Okay, So you remove a boiler, you integrate a steam generator instead of a boiler. And so this is what we're looking at in figure 8.7 from Moran. The box that you're seeing right here is not a boiler. It is a steam generator. It looks diagrammatically pretty much like a boiler did, except for the fact that I've got a reheat section as well in the cycle. And over here on the, the upper right, we're seeing that we actually have two turbines a high pressure turbine and a low pressure turbine. And we're gonna get energy out of both. The idea is to run two cycles or to run 
two heat engines in series. The second cycle is going to be at lower TSAT, PSAT, but it's still going to deliver power. So I'm going to go from, oops, I'm going to write this out a little bit more. I'm going to go from state one to state two. And then I'm going to go, which I'm mapping out here, from state one to state two. And then I go from state two to state three, right here. And, oops, let's go back. And then I'm going to ultimately, so I go from state one to state two. I am going to uh, try to make a quick correction here. There we go. There we go. Then I go from state three to state four, state four to state five. That basically that, that first from two to three to four is a reheat step. So I've got two heat engines. Once I've gone through two heat engines, I'm finally allowed to run my um, low energy steam into the condenser to go from state, uh, from this low pressure, uh, that uh, high quality state to a quality of zero. And the, let's cut that out of there, okay. And the, the idea here is that we have a high quality steam again. So, so if I were to run from state one down to four prime, we're actually looking at a lower quality uh, wet vapor than I could have gotten by reheating and running to state from state three to state four in this. So we get a higher uh, quality vapor and we're, we're ultimately having a two isentropic ideal processes. And we can use those ideal processes and add isentropic efficiencies of say 85% or something along those lines, so those correction factors to turn them into real superheat and reheat uh, cycles, which is beyond what we're going to do uh, in this lecture. So, looking at the uh, aspect of a superheated and reheated cycle, so two heat engines operating in, in, uh, in succession or in series, we want to remind ourselves of what's happening. So we, we are going to use a turbine to reduce the pressure or the velocity of a fluid that delivers shaft work. That's what a turbine does. And I'm going to have enthalpy going in at state one, enthalpy coming out at state two. The value of using enthalpy, once again, is that enthalpy captures both latent heat, the phase change, and sensible heat, the change in temperature. The work that we're looking at here is the worked example for the Rankine uh, ideal superheat and reheat. This is example 8.3. So I've asked you to read and work through 8.1. In last lecture, we worked through 8.2, which was going from a ideal ranking to a real ranking cycle. Now we're looking at uh, some key portions of the ideal superheat ranking cycle and, and reheat in this case. Uh, again, we're going to solve for states using the a quality uh, from entropy, from specific entropy values. We're going to maintain all of our significant digits in these in these uh, ratios for quality because uh, the small numbers in the denominator will have a large impact on, on the precision of our quality. So we don't truncate until we're at the very end. And then we're going to use those uh, the quality values to then back out the enthalpy change of the system. All right. So what we find is that the quality is of X2 would have been 98.95% uh, uh, drag vapor. The uh, state of, of X4, of the, enthalp the, excuse me, the quality of state four uh, would have been 93, 94%, which is really pretty good. We're getting some high quality vapor out of these worked examples. Uh, the Things to keep an eye out for when you're doing these quality conversion steps is once again, you're looking up the 
saturated vapor and saturated liquid uh, terms, or in this case, saturated fluid and saturated gas uh, in Marem. So fluid, F, is analogous to liquid, and gas, G, is analogous to vapor, V, uh, in the, between the two textbooks. But the point here is that you're looking up the pressure value at that lower pressure at, say, 7 bar, at uh, uh, 0.08 bar. The, you're not looking it up at the top of the cycle at, say, state 1 or state 3 using uh, the diagram from the last board. All right, moving on. The thermal efficiency, again, is very, very different than the isentropic efficiency. The isentropic efficiency is a correction factor to turn an ideal isentropic process into a real uh, uh, process with energy dissipation, with an increase in entropy. So um, ultimately what I'm looking at is a heat engine one plus heat engine two. So I'm gonna look at my enthalpy changes for the heat and for going through the turbine at high energy, number one, and the turbine at lower energy, number two, and I'm going to subtract out my parasitic losses at of the pump. Um, the de denominator is going to be, of course, all the energy input from the steam generator. So let's look at how that, that uh, uh, is delineated. So you've got turbine one, turbine two as my two heat engines, and the pump as my heat pump. And that leads us to a um, effectively running the fluid that goes to the turbine twice through the boiler, uh, well, through the superheat, uh, the steam generator. So we're going through the uh, superheating cycle and we're reheating it back up to run through the uh, second heat engine. This leads us with an increased efficiency, a high increase efficiency. We have now a 40% efficient ranking cycle. This is a ranking, ideal ranking, uh, superheat and reheat at 40%. The ideal ranking cycle was 37%. The real ranking cycle that we, when we used isentropic efficient, in, efficiencies dropped 37% down to about 31%. So I'm just noting that this says 40%, but this actually will additionally need to be pulled back to a real cycle using isentropic efficiencies. And so it's going to drop back down to around 37, 38%. So it's a way to increase the performance of our systems given real uh, challenges inside of, of turbines. Okay. So what did we learn from ranking power cycles? All right, let's look at this high quality steam. It's uh, a very pragmatic aspect of turbines. It's not just theory. We want high quality steam that has a, remember it, it is the quality of the vapor, not the quality of the, uh, the liquid. So this is a high quality steam means it is mostly dry vapor. Uh, the lack of water droplets in high quality steam is the advantage because water droplets are basically, it's like imagining sand pitting a surface of, of, of a turbine blade by erosion, by, by, you know, physically abrading the blades. And then you've got steam in there. You've got some dry steam in there that is a very corrosive fluid. So water is less corrosive than steam. Steam then uh, attacks those pits. Uh, then you got a, uh, tear apart your turbines faster. Yeah, that's downtime when you can't use the turbine to generate electricity. So it's a pragmatic aspect, not just theory. Uh, we have been uh, studying both one component, uh, excuse me, one and two phase systems with one component, which calls for a very clear understanding of the Gibbs phase rule. We have been on, uh, looking into language of what a saturated vapor and a saturated liquid is versus a superheated steam or a subcooled liquid. We have come to understand that wet vapor is a combination of dry vapor and liquid droplets. We have also defined the constraints for the critical 
point at the critical temperature in pressure volume space. And that goes back to the partial derivatives and the second partial derivatives of pressure and volume being equal to zero by definition. That is the critical point. We have found out that temperature entropy space, the plots of temperature and entropy, is a powerful tool to solve ranking problems. So we, even though we're solving for enthalpy at the end, because we can get so much value out of ideal cycles where we have isentropic processes, we can solve those problems faster. We can uh, uh, then adjust from ideal to real using an isentropic efficiency factor. Um, isentropic would be a reversible process. But in a real turbine, it's, you're going to have irreversibilities, irreversible processes. An irreversible process leads to an increase in entropy based on the Clausius inequality. And that increase in entropy is happening because energy is being dissipated. Ener this, the, the, the area under the curve is being spread out wider and dissipated into the universe. All right? So that pretty much sums up our work in ranking cycles, and you're welcome to come back and revisit this material and take further notes, and I hope this helps you in your homework as well as in your future quizzes. Have a great day, folks.